Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we're looking at Elysium Remastered, created by Titan's Bane, released for Skyrim Anniversary Edition. And while I covered the original Elysium last year, so much has changed that it deserves a whole new video. The version I've been playing on is version 1.71, released on the 17th of June 2022. You could check on the list's Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Firstly, what is Elysium Remastered? The description reads, Elysium Remastered is a complete rebuild of the original Elysium mod list. Like the original, it focuses primarily on visuals, and is fully featured with hundreds of new additions and full Creation Club support, extending the base setup with a full suite of gameplay overhauls and various new quests and encounters. Elysium Remastered is available to download from the Wabberjack Modlist installer. While I won't cover the specifics of the installation in this guide, the installation was incredibly easy, with clear instructions provided. For help with the download, you can follow along with my Wabberjack Exploration Guide video on my channel and linked below. With around 1,500 mods, many of which including high resolution textures, you'll need a lot of storage to download this. With Skyrim and Elysium installed, it comes close to 300 gigabytes. Although, you can lessen that by deleting some of the downloaded mods once it's installed. And once in game, all of the mod menus are already configured, so you just click play and get to it. Now for what the mod list adds. For this showcase, I'll be showing clips taken throughout my current playthrough. I've spent plenty of time with this list, and so I have a good grasp on what it's like to play. So it goes without saying, Elysium Remastered is one of the best looking lists out there. And as you can see here, I could honestly spend all day talking about the graphics mods that are included. But to note some of the most important, every texture has been improved, using mods like Noble Skyrim, 2020 Parallax, Book of Silence, and so many more. Most of which, favouring the highest texture resolution available. Then there's the weather with the main mod being Natural and Atmospheric Tamriel EMB3, which makes huge changes to the lighting and weather, and makes them much more, well, natural and atmospheric. And going along with this, enhanced volumetric lighting and shadows, as well as the Lux mods, create realistic lighting for both interiors and exteriors. As for trees and foliage, mods like Skyrim 3D Trees and Plants, 3D Landscapes, Happy Little Trees, and much more have been added, which aim to provide new and improved models that stick with the vanilla aesthetic. For the EMB, the list uses a tweaked combination of both the natural and atmospheric Tamriel EMB as well as photorealistic Tamriel 12. Although, the list's README describes how you can swap it out for any supported EMB of your choosing. Finally is the performance, and obviously, as you can probably guess, it will push your PC to the limit. Although, I found it runs much smoother than Elysium's previous version. Some places I could hold 60 FPS, whereas some would dip down to the low 50s. But on average, I was able to hold a steady and relatively high frame rate, which is pretty impressive for how this game looks. Plus the README includes some notes on how to improve performance, for those that are worried about running the list. While the graphics have a heavy focus, loads of gameplay changes have been included, adding much variety with personalising your character and really making the world come alive. The perk mod Valkyrie, Minimalistic Perks of Skyrim, has been included, which overhauls all perk trees for a total of 276 new perks. Although, unlike many other perk mods, it sticks to keeping the perks feeling like vanilla. The main aim is to keep things more balanced, and making some perks tailored for a more specific playstyle. And to go along with this, numerous mods by the author Enai Sion, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, have been included. Many of these tweak a certain aspect of the game to be more balanced and add more variety. For example, Evanstar adds new attributes from Standing Stones, Morningstar makes each race stand out from each other with tweaked racial bonuses, Wintersun provides benefits for worshipping a deity, Growl and Sacrilege make were beasts and vampires more viable playstyles, and Summer Mist adds 120 new enchantments to the game. 
As for other notable mods, open world loot makes it so the loot you find is mostly tied to your progression, so you're unlikely to find really powerful gear early on, but you will if you're willing to take on a difficult dungeon. And the mod experience makes it so you primarily gain XP from completing quests and killing monsters. Then there's complete crafting overhaul, which adds a ton of new features to crafting, such as the ability to break down weapons and armour, new and balanced crafting recipes, detailed filters for finding items, new XP rewards for crafting, and much more. And as a final note, it's worth mentioning that all of the Creation Club content from Anniversary Edition is compatible and included. The combat has been overhauled to be far more in-depth, and provides balance tweaks to make the world more dangerous for the unprepared. One of the key combat mods is Wildcat, which comes with a ton of features. The AI is more smarter and aggressive, blocking at the right moment provides more benefits, stamina needs to be managed more carefully, as having no stamina will slow the character, there's new types of injuries and staggers that affect you and the enemy, and much more. Also, for those wanting a more difficult or easier game, Wildcat's damage settings can be tweaked in the mod menu. While I recommend sticking with the vanilla settings, you could choose to make fights over in a few hits if you want, or make battles long and drawn out like some big anime fight. Your choice. On top of this, the mod Encounter Zones Unlocked makes it so dungeons aren't locked to the level of when you first entered them. And Enemy Friendly Fire allows allied NPCs to damage each other. And then there's the Know Your Enemy mod, which provides enemies with specific resistances and weaknesses meaning you'll have to adapt with what weapons you use against different NPCs. And finally, changes to movement have been made with mods like Athletic Combat and True Directional Movement, making combat feel far smoother. New dodge rolls are included, there's now Target Lock, and Third Person Combat is made into a more viable playstyle. Elysium Remastered comes with many of the best and most popular quest mods to date. Ones such as Beyond Skyrim Bruma, Worm's Tooth, Forgotten City, and more, all offer hours of new content, with new quests, world spaces, voice NPCs, weapons and armour, followers, and a bunch of other content to find. Also, mods such as Missives and Interesting NPCs add new smaller quests scattered about the world, meaning no matter where you are, you'll always find something to do. On top of this, many of the vanilla quests have been tweaked as well, offering more to do and more roleplay options. All of this realistic scenery wouldn't feel right without some good immersive audio, and so mods like Audio Overhaul, Sounds of Skyrim, Immersive Sounds and more have all been included, really making the world come alive. Also, New music mods are added, such as Musical Law, The Northerner Diaries, and Around the Fire, all of which I found to fit Skyrim's theme, though of course music is always subjective. Have a listen to the audio for yourself. Tons of new weapons have been included, all of which provide high resolution textures and balanced for the difficulty. Mods like Animated Armory and Ancient Nord Star Rim include all new weapon types such as quarterstaffs, claws, katanas and more. And the same goes for armours, with mods such as Armour and Clothing Extension and the Franklin Zunge Collection adding loads of new clothing options that all fit with the feeling of Skyrim. And as a final note, it's worth remembering that all Creation Club content is included, so you'll get all of those new armors and weapons. Then there's the new spells, with the mod Odin adding a bunch of new spells, while also tweaking most of the existing ones to feel more unique and balanced. Also the mod Triumvirate includes 75 new spells, each following along a new mage archetype, such as Druids, Shamans and so on.
For some other notable changes, a bunch of UI mods are included, providing a bunch of information for your character and giving a clearer look for Skyrim's vanilla design, as well as the Quick Loot mod, which adds in the looting system from Fallout 4. While optional, some survival mods go along with Creation Club Survival, such as a control panel to tweak survival settings and some spells aimed at helping the survival requirements. With the item durability mod, it means that weapons and armour will degrade over time and need to be repaired. The popular followers Inigo and Lucian are included. And finally, movement behaviour overhaul gives more weight and sway to your movement. And honestly, I'm so used to the smooth gliding feeling of vanilla, it did take some getting used to, but soon enough I found I was fine with it. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding and accepts that any consequences are yours to deal with. From looking at the list discord, I've noticed quite a few people asking about changing the UI with mods like Dear Diary and Nordic UI, and you can swap it out if you're willing to look for the required patches for other UI mods. And when it comes to adding new weapons and armour, you'll just want to make sure the values are balanced nicely to fit with Wildcat's combat overhaul and make sure it works with the new animations this list includes. Also, the README guide comes with a helpful list of mods to install if you use ultrawide like me. But other than that, I can't think of what this list needs, as unless you want something very specific out of Skyrim, like heavy survival mechanics or some large gameplay overhaul, the base this list provides covers pretty much everything. Quite often, what draws people to the attention of Elysium Remastered is how it looks. And yes, it really does look great, and pushes Skyrim's graphics to the limit. Yet that's just one layer to this list, as it offers an experience that enhances on every aspect of the game. The vast majority of gameplay mods perfectly sum it up, or instead of throwing a bunch of new content on top of the existing stuff, it really aims to tweak and balance vanilla Skyrim, and then add some new options on top of that, to expand gameplay variety without going overboard. There are many lists which focus on a specific goal, like survival, Dark Soulsy combat and so on, whereas Elysium Remastered feels like Skyrim, but balanced with a lot more to do and see. So if you want to get into a heavily modded playthrough, but also want to keep the core gameplay and feeling of Skyrim, then this will be the list for you. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow. I also have a Twitch where I'll stream, one day, I'm planning on it. And a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters, Ivan Mitchell, Emperor Wolf, Jack Ma, Michael Eric, and Christian Howell. And also, I just opened up a Ko-Fi, coffee, however you say it, which is a place to provide a one-time donation, you know, if, if you're into that. And thank you to Cosmic Hero, being the first person to give me a donation on there. And also Bowden Loose Tache, who donated just as I was making this video. Just thank you everyone who's helped the channel. I love making these videos, but boy do they just take up all of my free time, so um, it really helps that I get something back from it, and just thank you so, so much. And farewell everyone.